Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be Vampire, Master of Darkness for the Sega Game Gear. Uh, so this is a game that actually came out on the Sega Master System at first, and it was just called Master of Darkness. Uh, about a year or two later, it came out on the Sega Game Gear as Vampire, Master of Darkness in the United States. Uh, funny enough, the original Master of Darkness did not get a release in North America, but the Game Gear version did. And uh, this unfortunately is not the ideal way to play the game. Um, if you're interested in trying out this game, play the Master System one. It's a better game for a bunch of different reasons I'm going to go into as we play through this. Um, a lot of Master System games were converted over to Game Gear back in the day, and uh, they, did, they weren't really adjusted for the Game Gear's smaller screen size. So Sonic the Hedgehog is one of those games. Uh, Wonder Boy was another one of those games. Um, and what happens as a result is because the games weren't adjusted, adjusted for the Game Gear's smaller screen size, the screen sprites were way too large. Um, now, in Sonic the Hedgehog, it never bothered me, and in, actually, in some ways, it, I actually like it more on the Game Gear, but Master of Darkness is one of those examples where uh, it's actually significantly worse to experience on the Game Gear because of the large sprites. Your character takes up about a third of the screen. Um, enemies that you can see from a distance in the Master System version uh, will just start flying at you in the Game Gear version before you even see them. Uh, for instance, these birds on stage four, I believe, um, and dogs and things Things like that will just start dive bombing you um, before you even see them in this version. Whereas the Master System, when you'll see them from distance and you can prepare for them, uh, it's much much harder to prepare against a lot of enemies in this version uh, without having the whole thing memorized. So. I don't have the whole thing memorized because uh, a lot of the uh, gameplay elements in this just annoy the living hell out of me. So this is one of those let's plays I'm kind of forcing myself to do. Uh, and uh, so this is probably going to be a somewhat sloppy playthrough as well. I have beaten this game probably about four times now, this version. Four or five times actually. And I've played the Master System version a lot too. I've beaten that version at least five or six times. Um, so between that, you know, I've got a good handle on the game, but you're still going to see me getting knocked around like a ping pong ball uh, occasionally in this playthrough. So uh, if you're looking for like a, a uh, you know, <laughs> a no damage run or anything like that, you're not going to get that here. But uh, I am going to just show you through the game and uh, just sort of talk about it as we go. And uh, yeah, so we've actually already jumped in here, but before we actually start, as usual, I'd like to give a big shout out to my current Patreon backers, so they're going to go ahead and flash by the screen. Thank you guys for your continued patronage. Uh, likewise, with the recent live stream Super Chatters and channel members, your support is greatly appreciated. If anyone's interested in supporting the channel via places like that, links are in the description box below. So, all right, yeah, so you've got Vampire Master of Darkness here. So, because uh, the screen size wasn't re really adjusted all that much, they did actually remove some of the uh, heads up information if you want to access some of it like uh, your lives you have to hit the start button and your lives are in the uh, the bottom right hand portion of the screen um, so you know a lot of the game is quite similar to the Sega Master System version the big difference is that uh, you know some of the areas have been squished down uh, so to say and uh, you know whereas uh, some sections might be uh, quite large vertically in the Master System version they're actually quite small vertically in the Game Gear version uh, so you don't have as much vertical screen space in this one and um, you know the screen obviously doesn't go over to the right horizontally quite as much uh, either so uh, you get a much more crammed experience. Um, but one nice thing about it is some power-ups are easier to get from, you know, uh, the ground floor like I just did there. In the Master System version, I would have had to jump all the way up and uh, jump over and attack that mask to, uh, to get that item. So, um... Yeah, so, I mean, this is a very interesting version of the game to play if you're a fan of the Master System version. Uh, I don't really recommend it, again, as, like, uh, the primary version to play, but, you know, for me, as, as someone that has played through the Master System version a lot, uh... I was uh, very curious to check out this version. Uh, one other reason I was curious to check this out, and I was actually talking about this on my Twitch stream earlier uh, as I was practicing for this, is that I had a Game Gear as a kid. Uh, it was my first uh, handheld system growing up, and uh, I saw this game in the game stores all the time, and it had such a cool cover. It was, you know, the game's called Vampire Master of Darkness, and it had a literal vampire on the cover. It looked like an old-fashioned Count Dracula or something like that. Um, and Count Dracula actually is in this this game so it actually makes sense for him to be on the cover like that and as a kid it just always looked so cool um, and unfortunately I was never able to get a copy of it growing up and so uh, 
you know, playing it here and now over these last couple months in particular, uh, it's been the first time I've gotten to experience the Sega Game Gear version. And uh, so it's been cool experiencing it uh, from that angle, um, you know, trying to, you know, being able to experience something that I always wanted to play as a kid. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's not as awesome as, uh, as I had hoped, but, you know, I already kind of knew what I was getting into because I had played a lot of the Sega Master System version of the game, and I knew that, you know, from that experience, this was basically just going to be a trimmed down version of the game, or a straight port, or something like that, or sort of like an, uh, an amalgamation of the two. And for the most part, it is pretty much just a straight port, um, but again, they didn't uh, adjust, uh, you know, a lot of the... Uh, the game sequences uh, to really take advantage of the Game Gear's smaller screen size. They didn't tweak the sprites or anything like that. Uh, it's actually very reminiscent of, say, like Mega Man on the Game Boy, where Mega Man's sprite is pretty much the same size as it is in the NES games. Um, but the difference with that is they actually did create brand new levels for, you know, uh, many of the, uh, you know, the, the, well, the levels that you go through in that game. Um, <clears throat> so it kind of works out a little bit better than that, but it's they still were far from perfect on those those conversions to the Game Boy and the Mega Man games to Game Boy. Um, so yeah, uh, so I haven't really explained a whole lot about the game. Uh, if you're familiar with something like Castlevania, uh, Vampire or just Master of Darkness is kind of like Castlevania Light. Uh, it's uh, got a lot of similar elements, you know, you can you walk left to right, you press, uh, you know, you can jump and then you can attack. Uh, pressing up and attack will also use your special weapons. So right now I have these bombs, uh, which are actually pretty handy. They're probably the second most useful uh, sub weapon in the game. And I'm going to try to hold on to them as long as I can. Uh, you also have objects that just float in the sky, kind of like that. Um, that is a weapon, that is a axe, so one of the big differences between this and Castlevania is that, you know, Castlevania, you always just upgrade your main whip right away, um, through the first couple candles that you attack. In Vampire Master of Darkness, uh, it doesn't work like that. You start with a dagger always, and whether you upgrade said dagger, uh, depends on, you know, uh, what masks you attack to, uh, to reveal special weapons and whatnot. Uh, so this axe here is actually the most powerful uh, melee weapon in the game. Uh, but the issue with it is that it's relatively short range. And honestly, everything's pretty short range in this game. Uh, you do get a fencing sword, which is the longest ranged weapon in the game. But I definitely don't really want to mess around with that because it's uh, it's fairly weak. Uh, you do get a, a stick or a cane of some sort. Um, that's, uh, to me, that's like the best all-around weapon in the game, um, because it's about twice the length of the axe, so you don't have to be right next to enemies to, to kill them. Well, not as right next to the enemies to kill them. Um, and, uh, you're gonna be seeing me use the, uh, the, uh, the stick quite a bit over the course of the playthrough. Those red potions give you some health back. They give you a majority of your health back, actually, and you're going to see me uh, getting those a lot over the course of the game. Uh, especially later on in the playthrough in particular, I find that... <laughs> I don't know if this was intentional on the developer's you know, part. Um, it, it feels like they were aware of... Oh, you got to be kidding me. It feels like they were aware of how sloppy some of the level design was, and to compensate for that, they just gave you a bunch of health refills, uh, you know... Uh, more often than you would, you know, realistically need. Um, so you'll see what I mean. There will be like one room with a health potion, then the next room also has a health potion. Like, really? Was that necessary? So this is kind of bad. I'm going into this boss fight with the dagger, and the dagger is the worst weapon in the game. But fortunately, I've got a lot of sub weapon ammo. And uh, yeah, the dagger is just extremely weak. So if I get the stick and I can kill enemies in two hits with the stick, they'll take four hits with the dagger. And then they'll take uh, just one hit with the axe, so you can kind of see well, like you know how the damage output is uh, is balanced out. Um, and this game likes to troll you and drop a dagger right before the boss fight. Probably almost every boss fight in the game has a dagger, so you need to be really careful and not get knocked into it like I did. So unfortunately, this guy's taking a little bit longer to kill because I lost my axe. If I had my axe, he would have died uh, several hits faster. So. Yeah, so that is one of the many ways that uh, Vampire Master of Darkness can troll you. Uh, you just... 
<laughs> it's one of the many ways this game control you, and it's uh, it's very frustrating for it. And you really have to sort of rewire how your your you know your brain uh, works when you when you play this game. Um, you know, you know, in Castlevania, to make a Castlevania comparison, it's generally not a great idea to jump into the candles and whip them at the same time and just grab whatever is there uh, without seeing what it is. Uh, so, like, you know, a good way around that is to walk past it, then attack it, and if it's something you don't want, you just you just mosey along. Um, but yeah, look at that. So those guys took three hits to kill with a dagger, one hit with the stick. So just, the dagger is just an absolutely horrendous weapon, and it is really, really annoying that they constantly just give it back to you. Um, so you have to be very, very careful about that. You need to uh, be smart about attacking those masks for power-ups, and you need to make sure that, you know, I'll go ahead and grab the fencing sword just to show you. Um, you need to make sure that, uh, you know, you're far enough away from these things so even if you, you know, get hit by an enemy, you don't get, you don't get knocked into a power-up you don't want. Um, and that can actually happen quite a bit in this game if you're not careful, getting knocked into power-ups that you don't want. Alright, so here's some health right here. And, uh, these guys always just shoot bullets, so you can just, you know, duck under that. Pretty easy stuff right there. Right here, uh, we've got some enemies that just spawn in, um, and unfortunately, because I grabbed the fencing sword, uh, they take twice as many hits as they normally would. Normally, with the stick, they only take two- they only take one hit, not two hits. I don't know why I said two. Uh, so I actually just made this part harder on myself because of, uh, just trying to demonstrate some, uh, some weapons for you guys. I hope you're happy. <laughs> um... Yeah, so the, uh, parts like that are also not quite as bad in the Master System version because uh, there's actually going to be an extra life right there. Just got it. Um, it's not as bad to deal with in the Master System version because, again, you do see more uh, screen space. Uh, you have a lot more room to dodge in that game. And uh, even if enemies come at you relatively quickly, you can see them from a much greater distance. And so you have much more time to react. I'm going to grab this. I don't think it's health or anything. Yeah, no. So we have to actually go over there, but we can't actually climb over there. Uh, funny enough, you can actually sort of jump through uh, certain ceilings or platforms. In this, uh, there are, in other situations, I mean, you can actually bump your head on them. So it's they're kind of like trying to keep you from taking shortcuts through the levels, unfortunately. So yeah, there are kind of there are a bunch of inconsistencies like that in this game as well. Uh, so if you're a sequence breaker or, you know, you just want to kind of go through the game at your own uh, pace and flow, you know, uh, it's a little bit harder to do that in this game. Castlevania has some really nice uh, places you can damage boost and things like that or, or just skip certain uh, sections, but you don't really have that uh, as much in Master of Darkness. Got to keep calling it Vampire because it's the Game Gear version. It's called Vampire Master of Darkness. Uh, the original Master System version was just called Master of Darkness. And uh, there are a couple of uh, sections later on in the game where I will actually do like a, you know, what seems like a sequence break. Uh, it might even be, might even be towards the end of this level. Either that or it's level three. And it can't, actually, it might be level three. But uh, I'll definitely mention it once we get there. So, bats in this game are also quite annoying. Uh, they just like to go everywhere. Uh, I try to attack them as quickly as possible, and if I can't, uh, I just uh, sort of stop and just watch their patterns. A lot of times, they just fly around the screen in a circular fashion, and will keep flying around until you kill them. Or they kill you. Uh, you've also got these knives, these sort of phantom knives, that uh, they have a tendency of just dive-bombing you, and uh, it's very frustrating. So notice that everything's taking a lot of hits right now. Uh, if I stuck with the stick or the cane or whatever it is, uh, I'd be killing all these enemies in one hit, which is why I do not recommend switching over to the fencing sword. It's just an absolutely terrible weapon along with the dagger. Both the fencing sword and the, the dagger are awful weapons in the game. You should only use um, the axe or the, uh, the cane or the stick. And... Uh, yeah, I switched weapons just to show- well, <laughs> obviously the first weapon switch with the, uh, the dagger was just completely accidental. I just did not intend on doing that. That was not the game plan at all. But, uh, you know, the fencing sword was just to show you guys what it looked like and whatnot. 
I realize that in a lot of Let's Plays I do, I don't actually demonstrate all the weapons and whatnot. Mainly because I want to show how to get through the game in a relatively smooth manner. You know, that's part of the purpose of my Let's Plays, is like, here's a reliable way to get through the game for someone that wants to actually learn how to play a game. Here's a strategy you can use to get through the game uh, consistently. You know, that's basically the purpose of, of my Let's Plays. Uh, which is why I don't really experiment that much. So, you know, I like to get a good route, show you that route. That way, you've, you you just know what you can do to, to, to beat a game. There's a lot of people that play games and they don't know that they can do certain things or, you know, or they don't know they can play a certain way to make the game a lot easier themselves. And so they, they end up, you know, being frustrated with the game. Um, never completing it or giving up on it because it's too hard, but in reality, it's actually not as hard as they, they probably feel. Um, so my Let's Plays are there to just show people like, oh, this game isn't that hard, actually. You know, if you do this and do that, you're fine. You know, you'll get through the game and you'll enjoy it more, probably. So one of the reasons I'm actually doing this Let's Play in particular is that I kind of just wanted to do it... Um, you know, just to have it knocked off my list. There are, there are a few games I let's play like that, where I, I do them, not because, like, <laughs> I really want to do them, but it's just kind of like, I can say I've done them, you know? And I can have an archive of it on my channel. Not the best reason to do a let's play. Um, but there we go, there's another example right there. That, that Banshee chick just flew right by, and there was a dagger right there. And if I had jumped forward, she would have hit me, pushed me into the dagger. And notice that we're at a boss fight now. So right before the boss fight, a dagger appears. Alright, so this guy can be a little irritating as well. He just bounces all over the place, very inconsistently. Uh, one thing you will notice, though, is that uh, on bosses, when you uh, hit them, um, and they start blinking, uh, you're actually impervious to them, which is nice. So um, even fast bosses like this, if you time it right, you can hit them, and they'll, they'll just move right through you. And you'll notice that I'm not really using my sub-weapon here either, I'm just tanking and uh, taking hits from him. Because uh, the axe is actually more powerful than my sub-weapon is. Um, now there will be an exception later on in the game, you get this sort of drill-like weapon that you throw across the screen. And uh, that's actually the most powerful weapon in the game. And uh, we're going we're gonna to see those power-ups a lot on the last two stages. But one thing that is kind of cool about this game, this doesn't happen in Castlevania, at least the first one, is that, you know, when you beat a level, your weapon energy actually remains in this game. So I actually, uh, by not using my sub-weapons there, I actually managed to, um, you know, come into this level with a lot of weapon energy, which is good and useful. Alright, I'm not going to bother with the stick, I'm going to go ahead and just keep the axe. It comes out, it feels like it comes out a little bit slower, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't cover as much screen space, unfortunately, but, uh... Yeah, there's gonna actually gonna be a, uh, a gun right here. The gun is actually a really, really weak sub-weapon. I don't recommend using it. Uh, with how enemies are positioned in this game, it's just not worth it. So, I go with the bomb, and I just stay with the bomb. And we're gonna have to actually jump over here. It's a very tight jump right here. So, kind of like Castlevania or Mega Man, you want to sort of walk off the edge most of the way and then do your jump. And uh, that's how you can get past that jump easily. Uh, there's actually gonna be some health in uh, this mask up here. And then, funny enough, there's another gun right here. So, for some reason, guns are hidden in, in, hidden in walls in this level. And that dog just dive bombed me from off the screen. I didn't know he was there. I didn't know he had respawned already. Um, so again, that's another one of those downsides to playing the, the Game Gear version. This whole area has been shrunken down as well. So in the Master System version, there's a shaft that goes down the middle. Uh, you don't have that in uh, this version of the game because uh, of the the resolution uh, differences. Now they could have implemented that if they adjusted, you know. Uh, you know, all the sprite sizes and whatnot, but they didn't opt for that route when they made this game. Um, and this is gonna be something I don't want. Yeah, it's just a stick. And I'm gonna just fall down here. This is one of the parts where I will just fall down, and then this block sort of lowers. And these guys jump at you, 
There's gonna be some health right here. So, stairs are a little interesting to go down in this game, so what you can do is actually crawl like this. Just hold diagonally down forward or backwards, like in Super Castlevania 4. And you want to crawl towards the stairs. If you do that, you will, you'll latch onto the stairs guaranteed. Otherwise, like right now I'm pressing down, he's doing nothing, down, he's doing nothing, down, okay, it worked that time. Down, nothing, down. So it's easiest just to like duck and then crawl into a, uh, a, a stairwell like that. I'm gonna try to use my sub-weapon right here. Try to snipe this guy from a distance, if the game lets me. There we go, we got him, just like that. Go ahead and just see what that is. And unfortunately... <laughs> unlike Castlevania, uh, your weapon hitboxes are actually, uh, relatively small. So in Castlevania, if I was just standing and whipping, uh, I would have actually hit that dog. Because, like, the, the end of my whip has a very large hitbox. Uh, which is convenient, and makes things more convenient, but Master of Darkness doesn't really have that so much. Um, not as much, anyway. Um, at least with the axe. The axe hitbox seems to be pretty small. The stick's hitbox actually does seem to be a little bit larger, so um, that could, that's definitely more beneficial. But I think even with the stick, if I was just standing and attacking, I would have, I would have still missed the dog, and I still would have taken a hit, so. So let's just crawl down here, just like so. And I'm just gonna fall right down there, like that. So, there are a lot of troll item placements as well, like there was that mask right above those spikes, it just dropped sort of a point icon, nothing special. So there's, there's a lot of that in this game too. Uh, item drops that, for one, aren't very important, but they're over things that are very dangerous. Like, oh here, you know, you wanna take some damage for a couple of points? Like, no, actually, no, I'm good. I'm good, but but thanks for offering, vampire. I, I appreciate it, I think. All right, so I'm going to, yeah. If I had the stick, I could have actually ducked on the edge of that left platform and hit that uh, skeleton in the face. But because uh, I'm using the axe now, uh, I can't do that. So this is one of the parts I was talking about where uh, you can sort of do what I'm guessing is a sequence break. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's intentional to come up here. You can you can actually, in the, one of the lower floors, go all the way to the right and then come up here from the other side. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just skip it. We're going to just, you know... Um, make a very tight jump like we did there, and, uh, just traverse all the way on top there. So, okay. Yeah, you'll notice that each level is actually split into three sub-stages, so it's rounds and then stages for each round. Uh, three stages per round. Um, I'm not really sure why they did that, um... I really feel like these levels would have flowed a lot better if there weren't, uh, you know, divided sections like that, you know, score countdowns. Um, so okay, I'm gonna do a little trick here, this is an extra life, there we go, we just got one. So good to know that extra life is there, we can just jump back on that. Um, there's also this, boom, another bomb right there. Uh, interestingly, there's a similar section in the Master System version, but because the screen size is much larger, you have to actually walk up to the stairs and sort of jump off of them. Um, and I don't know if it's the same sub-weapon in the Master System one. But it is interesting playing this game after being familiar with the Master System one and to see how they shrunk down some of the, uh, the screens. That was health I could have actually used. I actually knew that was there, but I wasn't paying attention. And I'm not gonna touch this gun, because I've got 30 bombs right now. I'd rather keep my 30 bombs than go down to 14 ammo, or 14 bullets on my gun. So the gun is very weak, and again, if you pick up a different sub-weapon, uh, you'll actually revert back to the amount of ammo that that sub-weapon has by default. So if you have 30 bombs and you pick up a gun, well, you've just wasted all those bombs, you know. And the next bomb you pick up, like this one right here, uh, will just give you eight. So, we've got 34 now. So, we're in really good shape in terms of, uh, sub-weapons. And a lot of this stuff you won't really pick up on until, you know, after you've beaten the game a couple times. You won't really get into a rhythm with, like, the, the power-up, uh, I should say the sub-weapon system and whatnot. Until you've gone through the game a few times. But look, there's another dagger, which is convenient. It's placed right before the boss fight. Uh, so the boss fight's actually coming up here in just a moment. And there's another gun. Again, we don't want that. 
So we come on over here. We're actually in good shape for the boss. This boss is a pain because in the Master System version, it's actually pretty easy to avoid his projectiles. But in this version, because of the scrunched screen size, uh, it's very difficult to uh, avoid his projectiles. But as far as actually dodging them, it seems like staying somewhere in the middle and just using your sub weapon is good. But my sub weapon's not doing a lot of damage, so I might as well just tank and just uh, hit him with my axe. Boom, look, he's dead. He didn't even go to his second phase because I did so much damage with that axe. Alright, round four, laboratory. Alright, so this level is probably one of the most annoying in the entire game because you've got these birds that just dive bomb you. And I've said dive bomb a lot in this playthrough. Take a shot every time I say dive bomb. Um, but there are a lot of birds on this, uh, this level um, that just fly right at you uh, from off the screen. And so what you're gonna see me do is just constantly attacking as I'm moving. Just like that, because these guys will hit you, and it is very frustrating. Looks like there's a dog right there, I can try to snipe him. Let's hit that. Ooh, nice, very, very good, got some health back. So another strategy you can do is just try to throw a sub-weapon and then push the screen over. But it doesn't really work that well. Alright, more health. See, look, two health pickups already, right back to back, that's what I was talking about earlier. Like, oh, well, you know, you can't see these birds, so, you know, you're going to take a hit. Oops, I didn't mean to go up. So we'll just, uh, you know, instead of actually making uh, good levels, we'll just keep the trashy ones and, uh, you know, just compensate you with uh, some, some extra health. Third health pickup in uh, two screens. <laughs> like, that's exactly what I was talking about. Uh, I don't know if there's anything up here that might be an extra life. Uh, let's see. Ooh, this is the sub-weapon I was talking about. So unfortunately, we reverted our ammo. Uh, we went from, I think, 17 shots with the bomb to 8 shots with this. Um, but this is a very, very powerful sub-weapon, so I actually wanted to do that. And let's see what that is. Okay, nothing special there. Yeah, unfortunately, these bats can also go off the screen, uh, and they come back to finish up their pattern. So, also a little aggravating. Look at that! Another health pickup! See, that's exactly what I was talking about. We have to come on over here. And, uh, I definitely don't want to use my sub-weapon unless it's, uh, absolutely necessary. Sometimes the bats will just fly off the screen. If they go far enough off the screen, they, they'll, they'll stay off the screen. Uh, same with the birds in the game. They'll actually, uh, stay off the screen as well. Another extra life. So let's see how many lives we have. We have seven lives already. Um, I don't think we... We haven't died yet, have we? I don't think we have, so... You know, not too bad in that regard. We've gotten a one life clear so far. Um, or we're on our way to get a one life clear. Not sure if we will actually get it, but uh, we're in good shape now to potentially get it. Even though the playthrough has been pretty sloppy because of stuff like that, that feels pretty unavoidable. Pretty unavoidable. I mean, you know what? I feel like I may have been able to avoid that if I jumped off the stairwell. And that is actually something that's that's nice in this game. It's a lot like uh, some of the later Castlevanias. Uh, like Bloodlines or uh, Dracula X. Okay, you know... I'm trying to time my attack there, but you're not just not letting me, man. Uh, so that is a nice feature. It is definitely something I like in this game. You can you can't latch on the stairs uh, from a jump, but you can jump off of them uh, with a jump, which is very nice. Which gives you some flexibility. I always like it when games like this allow you to do that. Um, I need to get rid of this bat first before I see what's in these power ups, these power up canisters. See, if you have a long-range weapon like this, too, you can actually pick off bats from a distance. That is one benefit to having the gun. Um, but again, I, I don't think the gun is all that useful. Um, because a lot of enemies are just in your face, uh, to begin with, you know. So, the gun doesn't help when they're in your face. You need to use your melee attack. All 
Alright, yeah, I figured that was health in there. Uh, so there are a couple of masks behind pillars in this part, and I don't really recommend going for them. Because, uh... It's just a lot of, like, trollish item placement. Uh, one of them I think is a worse weapon that I can pick up. Uh, so really not worth going for the, uh, the masks behind the pillars. There's some more health. I'm not complaining I'm getting health, you know, because it is, you know, nice getting far along into the game and you know, getting yourself uh, close to a one credit clear or a one life clear. Just gonna wait for these things to disappear because I don't want to switch up my, uh, my sub weapon and I don't want to switch up my axe. Alright, so this part right here, um, this is actually a fairly unique part. You have to destroy a very specific enemy and then, uh, that, uh, Alarm kind of sound will go away, and then uh, then the uh, the exit will open up. Let's see what that is. Okay, so those uh, those crystals there they actually destroy everything on screen. Very useful items, but they only appear a handful of times in the game. So the nice thing about having this sub weapon is that it actually goes through walls, so I can kill this guy instantly. So it's another reason why having this sub weapon is really good, and another reason why I'm not wasting it. Notice that I'm not really using it. I'm just tanking the hits, um, because I'm sure there will be another health potion. Like that, right there. Alright, so I'm going to use it right here, though, just to kill that. There's also a mask down there, and it reveals a weapon, and I don't want that. It's probably a dagger, or like a fencing sword, or something like that. All right, two for one deal. And the back just goes straight up right towards me. I'm gonna try to hit this uh, Banshee through the floor. You notice that her head pops up just a little bit. And unfortunately, yeah, just barely, okay. Let's see if anything is in here. Yep, yeah, nope. Actually, yeah, I thought there was an extra life there. Okay, cool. Eight lives now. <laughs> so this game does dish out extra lives like, hol like, like Halloween candy. So, I, you know, I don't even know if I've ever continued in this game, this or the Master System version. Um, you know, it can definitely be an an a pretty annoying playthrough, but as far as, like, actual raw difficulty, uh, I don't think it actually has a lot of it. It's just very tedious difficulty. Um, the kind of difficulty that's not really all that well thought out. And, uh, you know, which is good for, for some players, but, you know, for someone like me that has been hardened by a lot of other action platformers, this is just more on the tedious side of things, which is why uh, every time I've done playthroughs of this or talked about it on my channel, I'm always very, very lukewarm on the uh, the whole thing. And I want to see what that is. It's a boomerang. Don't want the boomerang. And I'm not going to grab it just to show it off. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's uh, it's actually not a bad sub-weapon, but it does come out kind of slow, and it's not that powerful. So, yeah, not the, uh, not the best thing to have. Oh, and speaking of it, uh, I almost ran right into it. Which I definitely did not want to do. But there's going to be some health up here, which is fine. I just want to make sure that bat goes away. And fencing sword, we do not want that. I really wish the weapons were balanced out better in this game. Uh, like, I really feel like one of the problems with this game is that it, it does have multiple weapons. And, uh, you know, something like Castlevania is much more balanced with it just having one primary melee weapon that is also very powerful. It's a very powerful weapon in the game. Um... It's not overpowered, I should say, but it does, you know, good uh, good damage. Good enough damage to where you don't really need another sub-weapon in the game. Uh, or another main weapon in the game, I should say. You know, Castlevania balances that out with sub-weapons that are actually decent uh, and very useful. Uh, Vampire Master of Darkness, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going with this. 
Uh, it, it had no need for a, uh, you know, a main weapon system that gave you multiple different weapon types, when there was clearly one that's better than the other, um... And, I, I guess the big difference is that Castlevania doesn't let you downgrade your whip. Like, your whip is always strong, right? Once you get it upgraded, and you always get it upgraded right away, so... Uh, you're never really going through that game without an upgraded whip. But in Master of Darkness, you can get screwed. Like, uh, coming up here, there's gonna be another dagger drop. So this, uh, this mask right here, I believe, has a dagger. So let's go ahead and attack it. Yep. Always right before a boss, too. Like, the bosses are like, or like the, uh, sorry, the developers are like, ha <laughs> ha, gotcha! Like, I, I, it just, that just makes for an, an annoying experience. It's just tedious, it's annoying, it's not fun. Um... You know, trying to troll the player like that. So, yeah. I mean, they're still fun to be had in this game, even the Game Gear version. Um, I, I, I'm making it sound like I really hate the game. I don't hate the game, but it's just that... Uh, what disappoints me about it is that it's not nearly as good as it could have been. Like, there's a really good foundation here, and the developers kind of squandered it. I think that's my biggest problem with this game. Is that, um... It's not as good as it clearly could have been. Good foundation, good engine, you know, good graphics for the most part. Uh, I even don't mind some of the music, but when it comes down to just like the straight up gameplay, um, there are definitely some some balance issues that uh, make it more annoying to go through than it really should be. Okay, there's nothing like halfway through a stage getting knocked into a dagger. Uh, and then having to spend the other half of the stage with it, uh, and having everything take so many hits, when that mechanic just shouldn't have even been there to begin with. It's just one of those things. Um, it's got a weapon system that just wasn't really well thought out. I'd be interested to, to hear, uh, the developers, you know, talk about this game if any of them are still alive. Um, and see what their influences were. I mean, it, it obviously feels like Castlevania was an influence, but... I also kind of wonder out what else was going through their minds when they were making the game. Um, because there were some design choices they could have just literally ripped from something like Castlevania. And the game would have been better off for it. You know, it's not like Castlevania is filled with, like, really bad, awful design choices. It's not. <laughs> um... And, uh, I don't know, it feels like maybe it was influenced by Castlevania, but then they wanted to try to do their own thing with it. But, what they did, that was unique, ended up making the gameplay style, uh, worse. In the end. Which is a bummer. Alright, so, this is, uh, one of the only levels in the game where, uh, you take multiple routes, and you actually have to find a very specific route. So what I'd like to do is come all the way down here, um, you know, on the right-hand side, and then go down a couple of staircases. Can, can we hit that guy? There we go. Okay, not ideal. Um, so I'm gonna actually use my sub-weapons a little bit on this stage, because we actually get quite a few sub-weapon refills. So there we go, there's another one, we're up to 26. And as long as I get into the final boss here with, uh, you know, enough sub-weapon power, uh, we'll be fine. So there's another one right here. I like to make sure I don't destroy this block, but then I then I attack it, and then we fall down and go right to the right, right to the right. That's that's quite the redundancy, re blah, redundancy, Austin. All right, so look at that, another dagger. Oh, we must be near the boss if there is a dagger. Yeah. So this is actually a really short level if you know what you're doing. Um, and here we go, final boss. Let's see if we can do this on our first try. So he actually has two forms here. So this first form is actually probably the more interesting of the two in terms of uh, platforming and whatnot. You can actually stay on one side or the other, and these uh, sort of uh, spiky wooden posts uh, probably won't hit you. Uh, they don't go all the way to the, uh, the last block. Uh, so let's see, there we go. So I do need to jump on these platforms if I want to actually uh, get enough distance to, uh, to hit him. But, I'm just gonna focus on using my, uh, sub-weapon, if I can. Just like so. Yep, 
And that didn't hit him for some reason. It's okay. Just use my axe. So I think I should have enough health to get through this last form here without too much trouble. But it can be a little bit of a pain. So he's gonna turn into uh, Dracula now. Or Dracula's going to appear. I don't know if it's actually him. I wasn't reading the story. Uh, but you've got these bats that come up on this part right here, and they just seem to be completely random. So I'm just gonna walk back and forth and hope that they don't hit me. Wow. I didn't get hit by a single one, that's a first. Alright, so now Dracula appears a bunch of times, shoots out these, uh, projectiles that bounce at a 45 degree angle, or so. And they're a little hard to avoid, unfortunately. He's gonna appear like that, we can get a few pot shots. And the bats zoom in. Ah, this is so annoying. <laughs> He's gonna come in from the left as well, we wanna jump over him like that. And that's it. Game over. We finished. So I think that was, you know, despite the really, really sloppy playthrough, that was still a one life clear. So we got a one life clear, a one LC, uh, however you like to um, call it online. And there we go. Yeah, so we just beat uh, Vampire Master of Darkness for the Sega Game Gear. Uh, definitely a bit of a different kind of let's play because, you know, I, I, I'm obviously not the most thrilled about this game. Um, and, uh, yeah. But, uh, I'm glad I've finally done it. I'm glad I've got this one knocked off my list. Um, and I'm glad I've experienced this one because, again, like I said, I, I always wanted this game growing up as a kid. Uh, you know, being that, uh, I had a Game Gear growing up in my formative years. And, uh, you know, being familiar with the Master System version, it is actually quite different. Oh, God. I can't talk right now. I'm actually not feeling that well as well. I'm recording this after work for a change. Normally, I do my Let's Plays on my days off now, but... Um, it's interesting seeing all the differences between the, the Master System one. Uh, seeing how they tried shrinking down uh, various parts of the game. And seeing how much that was actually a detriment to the overall... Uh, you just potential enjoyment I can have with the game. Um, I definitely think if you really want to play one of these versions of the game, play the Master System version. I still think it's a Castlevania Lite. I don't think it's like a top tier action platformer from its time period, but it's a solid enough game where I think a lot of people could enjoy it. And it's definitely more solid than the Game Gear version because not as many cheap shots. You can see enemies coming at you from a uh, greater distance. Um, one other thing I noticed in this version was that uh, your character is closer to the right-hand side of the screen than he is the left-hand side of the screen when you're walking and scrolling the screen over, which gives you even less distance to react to enemies that just rush out at you. So it's just, it's a, it, it's a very cheap uh, experience. Uh, like, uh, lots of cheap shots is what I mean. Um, so, yeah, if you're gonna play one, play the Master System version, don't play this one. Um, unless you got a Game Gear, you gotta act, you know, you just gotta play it on a real Game Gear, then by all means, give it a shot. Um, but, yeah, if you, if you wanna sit down and just enjoy Master of Darkness as a whole, just play the Master System version. Um, that is my suggestion to anyone trying to check out this game. Um, but yeah, that was Vampire Master of Darkness. I hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. Uh, if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. Uh, my <laughs> Let's Plays aren't usually as uh, drunk and ranty as this one was, but uh, if you like more tutorial-focused playthroughs and whatnot, and hopefully slightly more skillful gameplay than what you saw here, um, then definitely check out my channel and check out my other videos. Um, uh, for everyone already sub, thank you for your continued support. And uh, I guess until the next one, guys, take it easy.